How do you do? Rumor tells me that in order to score a point, you've decided to take your case to the court. Might I be allowed to give a little service? You'll need it if you mean to play the game. Our first round begins amongst all the various strips of ash, beech, hickory, etc., required for making tennis or badminton rackets. Five or six such pieces are placed in alternate formation and glued together. Then they are bent round the model and securely clamped with a band of steel. The wedge or throat of the racket is cut, glued and placed in position. This is screwed up and left for at least two days. After the bending, the racket is shaped by hand and shaved down to its final proportion. The utmost care must be taken regarding the size of handle and correct balance. Grooves are made ready for stringing. And this is how they are polished. The coating of cellulose enamel goes over the surgical tape binding. Stringing is also done on hydraulic machines. These can be graduated for extreme or moderate tension. The main string is first placed in by hand, then a weaver passes the cross of the string through from hole to hole, filling them up with an awl. Here's the finished badminton racket. The almost completed tennis racket handle is shaved down to accommodate the favorite form of grip, leather. Tennis, by the way, was once the exclusive pastime of royalty and nobility and an expert player was Henry VIII, which reminds me of the early private life of Henry VIII, and this lovely Elizabethan house, Send Manor, Ripley. Henry, as a small boy, went to school at Newark Abbey. Queen Elizabeth of York, Henry's mother, who lived at Richmond, frequently visited her son and acquired Send Manor as a resting place for the night. In those days, the journey of 25 miles from Richmond to Send Manor could not be made twice in a single day. When the Queen Mother died, Henry VIII inherited the property, and it is said that he gave the manor and the surrounding land as a prize in a jousting tournament at Woolwich. Evidence of this is to be seen in the stained glass windows, Henry's crest and that of Count Sagos, the fortunate winner. In the spacious grounds, an old 16th century tithe barn still stands. It is used today as a dance room and private cinema. Nearby are the old cowsheds. And this the original old granary. Surrounding the farmyard is this beautiful rose walk. So young Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard not to get the poor dog a bone or milk for the cat, but butter and milk for making cream. This is just another tip for you housewives, and simple too. Now you take, all recipes begin like that, two ounces of butter, placing it in a saucer. Add to this four ounces of milk. That's just one fifth of a pint. This you pour in with the butter. That's all the ingredients, except perhaps for a little elbow grease as you stir it on the stove. Keep stirring until the butter has quite melted. But whatever you do, don't let it boil. Now place the emulsifier top onto a glass jar. And pour the milk in. handle allows you to pump, and as you pump, the mixture emerges into the glass container as rich cream. Simple, isn't it? Unscrew the top, and there you are. It's all ready now for any course you care to take. Perhaps it's an old fresco lunch, like this. Or this. And where do you think this banquet is taking place? You'll probably never guess. Do these old walls look at all familiar? Ah, so you recognize their whereabouts. It's along the Thames foreshore, right beneath the Tower of London, and it's part of the scheme for Tower Hill Improvement. This artificial tidal playground was first opened in 1934 by His Late Majesty King George V, who also gave special permission for its construction. At this part of the foreshore, property of the town, and the tower ranked as a royal palace. 
600 tons of sand from the Essex coast to transform grit and gravel into a firm sandy beach stretching a distance of 300 yards. As there's a 22-foot variation in the tide, it is available only when the water is low. As the narrowing beach is deserted, the water sports begin. Exit is made by an accommodation ladder which is lowered from the car front. Sand castles disappear as the ladder is pulled to the top. In its long years of existence, the grim old tower has been fortress, prison, palace and museum. Now we have a leader right outside Plato's gate. Thames is full of contrast, has witnessed this strange craft, a bucket dredger, which is one of a fleet belonging to the Port of London Authority. These vessels are always journeying up from down the Thames between the London docks and Gravesend. Secured by anchors and cables, dredging begins. An endless chain of buckets runs round the ladder frame. These run empty down the underside of the ladder, reach the bed of the river, dig into the mud, and return full. Their contents are discharged down a chute. This deposits the mud into the dredger's hold. When the dredger's hold or a barge has been filled, it ceases work, steals away to sea, and there the mud is dumped. And we'll steal away to see Jack Brady's back. <laughs>